Hello, my name is Henry Emfrey, and this is an App Game Kit game development tutorial. Now, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a model jump in 3D. Now, here we have our code. This is the code in its entirety, but after this tutorial is over, I'm going to show you a version of this code without these comments here. These comments are these green words after the slashes. So I'm gonna show you a version of this code without those once I finish explaining this code. Okay, so first we got our setup, our default setup. Every time you launch a project in App Game Kit, it gives you these figures right here from set error mode to use new default font. That just comes with every project in App Game Kit. Next is my model. I'm using a .b3d model, but you can probably use an obj model or .x model or, or .dae model. This is just the model that I'm using. It's the model that I always use in my tutorial. If you want to know how to, I made this, I'll leave a link below on how this model was made, but you can actually use any model. And this model is inside of my app game kit assets folder. I put my app game kit folder on my desktop inside of a folder called jump 3d that I've created and, and right now we're inside of our media folder see media and I, that's where I put my assets okay so that's my model and I gave the, the model an ID of one then I added the close to my model the, the close is a jpg file which is also right here in my media folder and I gave my, the close an ID of two and right here I had to unwrap these clothes right here and set it to mode one not mode zero but mode one so that when I attach it to this model it won't look weird so here we actually attach the clothes to our model so here we use the Mitos ID right here. We gave it an index number of one and we attached the close to our model two. And this is what brings it the model and close together. And then we just set the mode to zero because we're not using layers in this tutorial. So just put zero here. Then I rotated my character so that it would look normal once we launch our game. Again, so again, I used the ID of one as I did here. And as I did here, and just rotated it. These three numbers has to do with the x, y, z coordinate. Twenty going to the x direction. A zero is the y direction, and this last zero is the z direction. And these are the positions in which my character will be once we launch our game. X has to do with going right and left. Y has to do with going up and down, and z has to do with going the forward and backwards direction in 3d space and here is the player's collision radius see when our player collides with the floor it won't be the model that actually does the colliding but it'll be a shape which will be colliding with the floor which will determine whether our model has hit the floor or not so i just made this and down here this is our collision setup and this is just a part of this function right here that needs to be here okay so that's what that is and next i create the floor the floor is going to be a box i gave the floor an id of three and once again these three numbers the 50 is the x coordinate and six is the y coordinate and 50 is the z coordinate remember again x has to do with going right and left y has to do with going up and down and z has to do with going forward backwards in 3d space and that's that's kind of the pattern in most of these functions in app game kit when we're dealing with 3d you have your id to tell what item you want to affect and then you have the last three numbers which will be x y z coordinates so we have our box and then we take that same id and determine the box's position so once again zero has to do with the x which would be the right and left direction where it will appear minus 310 has to do with our box appearing at the bottom 
and 300 has to do with the Z direction which our box will appear in 3D space in the forward and backwards coordinate. And so and here we resize the box using the same methods. We took the ID and used resize the box. And then we took the same ID and made the box red if you use these numbers here. And then we took our positions. Remember, we gave Henry an idea of one. So here we determine our player's position and we're just putting these coordinates right here. You know, we could have just put zero here, minus 300 here, 300 here, but we need variables to store information so that it can work with the rest of our code. Okay, so next we are setting up our collision. We're dealing with a Raycast system. I'm not really good with Raycast stuff, but this is how my collision thing works. We basically, we're taking the old coordinate of the ray and matching it with the new tail end of the ray right here. And we take this one here and put it on our character. So that's the first step in setting up our collision. So if, if the ray hits, that will determine whether we collided with something or not. And here we just creating a collision variable. So we set the old and the new coordinates to these variables here. And we took all these variables, set them in our code right here. Make sure you put zero right here because we need the zero as a parameter. But after that, you just take all this stuff and put it right here in our code. And then you take this collision radius and put it at the end here because we need all these parameters for our collision to work. Okay, so we got our collision function and then we set it to this, all to this variable here. So this says if we collide with the floor or if a collision is detected, then print the word collision at the top of the screen and falling stops because that's what we wrote here. If, we've, if we're not falling and we're not jumping, then Henry doesn't fall anymore. Remember, Y has to do with going up and down and minus zero means Henry doesn't go down anymore or has no speed. Now, one note I would like to make is Map Game Kit 2D if we were going down, this would be a plus instead. But in 3D, in Epic Kids 3D, they use a minus for going down. So minus means going down. A player won't be falling if it collides with the floor. Otherwise, else means otherwise, if the player hasn't collided with the floor yet, then he would keep falling until it does. And that's what we got set up here on this else statement that mirrors what we have up here. See, if a uh, fall is one and there's no jumping, then Henry will continue to go down at a speed of three pixels per second until he collides with something. Okay, so that's what these things mean. This part has to do with this part and below the else statement, this part has to do with this part down here. Hope that makes sense. Okay, so now we deal with our jump. I put the jump on the A key and this is the 65s had to do with the A keys key code. So whenever the A button is pressed, jump is set to one. And if jump is set to one, you can't fall anymore, but you will be moving up at a speed of two pixels per second. See, plus means going up in App Game Kit 3D. And Y has to do with going up and down. So this means you'll be going up for two pixels per second and you'll keep going up until the timer reaches above 80. Once the timer reaches above 80, then will be when you start going down. And that's why we have this minus here. And you will be moving down at two pixels per second. Okay, so that's how our jump works. And it makes you close it out with this end if statement, as you should do whenever you use the word if in Map App Game Kit. Make sure you close it out. 
same here too. So this says if the player collides with the floor and the jump timer is above 80, then you will no longer be moving up and down because we canceled out the two here. So you won't be going down at any speed anymore. And you also won't be falling because we canceled out the fall. Not right here, so you won't be going down anymore. The jump timer will be set to zero, so you won't be going up or down anymore. And we just cancel out the whole jump, period, by setting it to zero. If jump is not equal one, then none of this will happen. So we have, we set jump to zero. So therefore, none of this stuff will happen until you press the button again. Okay, so that's it. We don't really need this print stuff here, but you can leave it if you want to. And then just close your loop. Always close your do loop. See? Do loop. So make sure you close out the whole code. So we'll do loop. And here is the entire code. I realized that the screen recorder didn't capture the entire code the first time. Pause the video as needed. Our code without the comments and without the green writing. Okay, so that's our code. Now let's launch this game and see what happens. Okay, so that, thus, this is what we have. This is our model with its clothes on, and this is the box that it's standing on. So now, if I press the A button, it would jump, you see, and it will go back down. Let's try again. Go up, and back down. And if you look up here, you see that we get the sign that says collision because he's touching the floor. But if we jump, that changes because he's not touching the floor anymore until he collides with the floor again. So that's how jumping works. Take what you learned in this tutorial and expand on it. Till next time. Thanks. Bye. <clears throat>